Welcome for episode 3 of this mini series uh, on multi cloud cybersecurity strategy. In the first episode, uh, we went through the definition of multi cloud and which case study are generally and commonly uh, categorized or, or are the most common that you can find and uh, how each could require a completely different. Uh, approach to a multi-cloud journey. We went through in episode two on all pillar that need to be part of the overall design conversation because sometimes you talk about multi-cloud but you are not discussing the design but you are discussing a product. We also seen, we have seen how even in this case uh, of multi-cloud you need to differentiate which type of option you want to go for and uh, all these elements uh, are really important uh, in the overall conversation but right now in this episode episode 3 we go a bit uh, out uh, on more the practical side of multi-cloud and what we have been learning from the data breach in this slide you are having three different uh, uh, data breach that happen and uh, how they are related to multi-cloud is most of the time about a lateral move on the capability to enlarge the footprint so that's the reason why I wanted to go through uh, a, 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 an attack pattern that uh, using a, a meter attack definition and like that we can see where you should look uh, from a, a, a strategy perspective to fill these gaps and uh, you should gain a bit more confidence on what is really important to prioritize you know, on your overall uh, uh, view. Now, Acelion is one attacker exploited uh, the vulnerability. There is always uh, an entry point, there is always uh, a sort of zero day of well-known vulnerability that get discovered, sometimes it's just CV, they scan around, they find, first conversation is why is that exposed, and that is the, the beginning of the kill chain. Kill chain is the technical definition on now an attack get performed and how each technique uh, get uh, uh, chained to each other. We do know how solar wind impacted in terms of supply chain. We do know also how that means uh, in terms uh, of moving across customer. We had even example uh, of uh, vendors of security being compromised and being used to move uh, uh, across customers. Um, service provider are uh, a, a typical example, but in this specific case, uh, uh, the attacker used credential theft and privileged escalation to move laterally. In Capital One breach, we are talking about 2019, was a, a component and a misconfiguration in a WAF to allow the first foot, uh, the first foothold in the environment. Now, I want to highlight how in the cloud there is no CVE and sometimes you miss uh, a real story. You need to be the one to be capable to make the story. That's the reason why in a multi-cloud strategy you should prioritize to be capable to see how along a timeline a configuration change across your environment. That change management enforcement is really important. Could be an attacker to do a change to your environment or could have been a change that the cloud service provider made directly in the environment and in the product that is providing to have been allowing certain things. I want to tell you how API versioning is important because sometimes new version of API allow new things and change your threat model. That's the reason why threat model is a so important conversation on having an understanding of which capability, which exposure you do have in your environment. Now, if we focus on these cases, uh, a common uh, pattern is an initial uh, access, an execution, and all this uh, uh, overview is based uh, on just uh, well-known technique uh, 
and uh, you find here each description. Remember, you can download the slides. I, pu uh, I left it public uh, on a public um, on SlideShare repo. So just look into the description of the video and download it if you want. In execution, a privilege escalation, defense evasion, credential access, discovery, and lateral move. Now, as you see, I place lateral move in the middle because if you have multi-cloud, this lateral move can happen even in a CI CD. So for me, it was important to streamline each step of an attacker and where actually is taking, care, uh, taking place a potential propagation. That is generally at credential access and discovery and lateral move. At that stage, uh, the foothold of the attacker is solid, is uh, anyway already having uh, admin uh, um, capabilities uh, in some host because he got already the privilege escalation, as you see here, and uh, is probably already well established in the environment, having always uh, a capability to reconnect to the environment. Some attack in cloud don't expect that uh, are always uh, about disrupting something they could stay hidden in your environment for a long time to enlarge their collection of data so here you see some uh, of the most specific collection exfiltration and impact uh, in terms of techniques you can uh, look up uh, at each technique you'll find that many are anyway cloud service uh, oriented uh, here for example uh, you have uh, venetian access for, for the public facing application you move uh, with valid account you are going to execute and find an execution layer don't forget that this one could be straight into the cloud service provider console access. The execution could be also the, uh, an adversary that executes software remotely, sometimes tools, but sometimes can be just scripting. So don't look only on the fact that they will download something. Privilege escalation and uh, is anyway at that time already into a foothold in the environment where it can evade the defense and defense evasion is quite a big topic remember that when i was talking on investing in continuous um, forensics i'm talking about memory forensics i'm talking about tools in terms of forensics because you need to be capable to build a timeline of an, uh, an incident and understand what was the change in the environment that makes something possible if there was any. So as you saw, we went through them all in terms of uh, T0, T1072, we are at the execution, we do the privilege escalation, and uh, you move uh, across the environment. The defensive vision that I was uh, referring, uh, it can be also about deleting traces uh, of their own attack. Credential access, unsecured credential, but also creating the credential. If you already exploit something, you could have uh, creation of new credential in your environment. Don't forget that these are common attack pattern, but that doesn't mean that they attack you only in this way. In the same way, when you attack somebody in boxing, you don't use only a job. You do chain various attack to make it through. So credential access and exploitation of all the credential services are a key point, but let's move into the discovery for example uh, attackers query for and locate files and directories but also software discovery understand what is installed and what can be useful for them also in terms of i am trying to think about a bloodhound kind of tools how much you discover on what it can be uh, escalated and which 
high-end pattern are the most privileged, you can move uh, laterally, but don't focus just on host to host. Think on a big picture on how this token or how some uh, uh, connection east west across cloud service provider can be used. If you zoom in into this lateral move, we can use example also within Kubernetes itself. You can have a pod having an API service, the API service get call and get uh, exploited from there. It can move and expand across. There is where micro segmentation, that is an important uh, architecture uh, consideration when you design something is extremely available. But the lateral move, obviously, it's not just a typical pass the hash. You can use token API and uh, the, the dual factor authentication that is a, a big conversation all around the industry is relevant, but it's not a panacea of everything. You need to think that if a session is already authenticated, uh, you need to be capable to authenticate the device that is used to be sure that the session is invalid. So pass the hash can be also a game on session. If you steal a session that is already authenticated and authorized, you bypass and it's way, way easier for an attacker why you should spend time to find a vulnerability in something when you can just reuse an authentication that already took place. Data from cloud storage objects is a big, big topic. You know how much cold and dot storage we do have in any service front end and back end, and how much valuable is for an attacker to get at the end already something that was already dumped from a database. Think about the backup value. That's the reason why also the encryption at rest of those volume is extremely important. But remember that if you give access to a storage object, there is all API conversation to be done. And there is where it's really important that you look into which kind of exfiltration is possible, also through the API. Don't forget each service does have an API. That could be an exfiltration point too, not just the web service consuming that API and the backend. Now, when you move uh, into the collection and exfiltration, you should look uh, into what does it mean. You can destroy data, make it uh, unusable, and uh, deploy and uh, create uh, tools, ransomware attack, and whatever you can think of. But you can stay also hidden there forever. Forever. I mean, let's open now, but if you do look uh, at uh, attacks uh, uh, like uh, Magikart, they stay hidden on the checkout page trying to collect more credit cards than they can. It's, uh, they compromise probably a CI CD, they push their JavaScript into the pages uh, and they stay hidden there more than they can till they get uh, restored and is somehow mitigated. But that is the target also on consuming data. Think how valuable can be a data pipeline. And so be capable to read that data pipeline. That is where you should think uh, in terms of transport bus, encryption, uh, and all other things. I thought it was valuable to go through these, uh, uh, these uh, step by step because you'll find that as your thinking path. Because uh, you need to think as an attacker and understand uh, how not all network mitigation are covering east-west traffic in the same way how your SD1 or, or the most fancy application routing that you are using doesn't mean that is proxying and reading the data and is capable to action on the data recognizing an attacker. Now, Industry 4.0 is a topic on itself, and I mean in terms of, of OT, but if you look, we have on one side all uh, big vendors. Uh, I don't want to put pressure on just one. Every vendor does have a roadmap where integrate a Cloud Connect kind. 
the reason why I already explained is the consuming uh, of the data from a manufacturing perspective that can be really available in terms of processing. And uh, you see that uh, the focus was also to, to change the mode of operation of the PLC from a, a practical switch that was protecting you from a ransomware became just something that can be remotely triggered by an API, also by the attacker itself. So if you look uh, on the evolution, when you talk about OT, everybody talk about Stuxnet and whatever, but let's uh, see something in terms of practical case study. And uh, I thought it was right to mention this one. So in 2014, there was a, a German steel mill that suffered a sophisticated attack on the, uh, on the furnace itself. So it got shut down improperly and that made it unstable, the furnace itself. Now, that means that a, a cyber attack had a physical impact also on health and safety of who was operating that. We do know how the attack on OT can be really specific. We do have example on, a, uh, on the last uh, Ukrainian power grid attack, but uh, we can see that also the, mo the, the, the malware in terms of tr uh, Triton, for example, uh, is a, a really good one, you, is uh, evolving, evolving in the way where uh, it's not uh, only an OT malware, is a malware that is capable from, to move from IT and OT. Now your comment should be, okay, there is segregation between the two. Yeah, but there are some dependency that shouldn't be there. And uh, we do see from all attacks that we are having all around, how even mission critical is suffering of some remote control uh, requirement uh, that got exploited in the wrong way. I'm not going to say and discuss on why it happened. It's a long conversation, but what I'm trying to say, don't think only about the complicated uh, nation state attack. Think that the malware is becoming a tool in a criminal uh, um, provided SaaS service to other criminal. So right now they are moving uh, also into a sort of uh, cloud service provider criminal organization renting those tools and those tools are designed to be applicable to multiple environment so Triton is an example it can be become a tool that is in these SaaS services and it get deployed during an attack you could have uh, some sort of, of automation where a scan recognize a machine learning uh, uh, process trigger some decision on, on which tool to use. It's uh, all extremely automated. And you need to look into that uh, from uh, a, an attacker perspective. In these slides, uh, I'm highlighting uh, how you should think. I'm not just highlighting uh, tons of problem only because uh, I'm trying to give you the key on the thinking that you should have on the design. The ITOT segregation is something that you don't need me to explain is mandatory, but you need to understand how the two worlds are converging, how industry 4.0 is going for uh, IoT, how the sensor of the OT are, are moving from mechanical to be some uh, embedded system that is having connectivity, think about sensor for temperature or other things that before were poor mechanical kind. Now, if you combine the overall picture, you'll find that also your incident response should be aligned, but you know the difference between and IT and OT and how the security platform in OT are more passive uh, uh, recon uh, reconnaissance than actually the IT one. So st uh, stay into the thinking from an attacking perspective. Think about the lateral move, that that is a key pivotal point across, but try to standardize uh, the approach, jump boxes, uh, uh, all uh, common practice, uh, 
in the Purdue model you have already a sort of DMZ but try to think it in modern way how you transport data can you do an outbound channel or not I think and I hope is valuable uh, thinking for you I stop here uh, because uh, that is the key point think like an attacker because at the end of the day we are all focused on trying to secure the environment but try to standardize also with the tools that you already have from an architecture standpoint you have for sure an architect vision you have a business architecture you do have the data architecture and an application architecture roadmap that is going to be homogeneous with all your CTO roadmap and uh, is security architecture need to support them all. So I mentioned TOGAF here because it's the most common in terms of principle, but you need to be aligned across the business because a multi-cloud strategy touch them all. Your governance and compliance can't be only about the data. It can be an overall compliance about all your operation, the migration, the change management, and the continuous security monitoring, leveraging the best tool that you can, especially if native from the cloud service provider. That is a key, key point. Now, I hope you found uh, all these mini series uh, useful. Feel free to comment, drop me a message, and uh, I do my best to share this data. This is uh, on SlideShare, as I said, and you can uh, use it uh, as uh, a mapping of your thinking. So uh, if you like uh, the original content that I'm creating, please share and subscribe uh, on YouTube. I really appreciate your support. Take care. Have a good one. Bye.